Then let's go through our notes. So today we're talking about quadratic formula. Um, we're going to talk about how we use it. We're also talking about the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic formula, which is going to do the exact same thing that our calculators did two days ago for us, right? Or was that yesterday we did that? We talked about when it. Was that? that was last week. Two days ago. We when we put it in our calculator, we saw if it had two real, one real, or two complex. That was last week. That was last week. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing with the discriminant today. So you don't actually need to use your calculator for it. But, so sometimes problems just aren't nice, right? We talk about how we factor things to solve them, or we get like x squared by itself to solve it. Sometimes it's not nice. Sometimes it's 7x squared plus 13x minus 10 equals 0. Can you factor that, or do you even want to try and factor that? No. Not, not at all, right? So, what we're going to use that is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, x equals negative b. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. To use this, your equation needs to be in standard form, right? ax squared plus bx plus c. You take your a, your b, and your c, and you just plug it into all these places. You will not be given this on the test. You need to know it. Now, the more you use it, the easier it will get. Plus, we have two different ways today to try and remember it. Um, the first way is a sing-along. So we will get to sing along to it. Um, the second way is like a kind of a, a story almost. And that's why a lot of my kids last year like to say it. So we'll do them both. So I don't know. Uh oh, oh. Yeah. So the sing along first. Do you remember this? Which one do you remember? Hi guys, this is Julie with Mobile.com, and I have a huge tip to help you remember the quadratic equation. Now every once in a while you're going to have a teacher that's going to put this on the test and they're going to say you need to have it memorized. So how are you going to memorize it? You've got a song. It's a song everybody knows. So we're going to sing this equation to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Now I'm going to start with, I am not a singer. I'm a math teacher. So excuse the singing. I'm going to sing it once for you, and then I'm going to ask you to sing it along with me. And you all will sing it along, or you're going to sing along by yourself? X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root. B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. It's important to know the word is opposite, not negative B. Because sometimes when you're plugging in a B, you need the opposite sign. So we use the word opposite there. Let's try it again. You're going to sing with me this time. No, seriously. If I catch you not singing, you're going to do it yourself. Sing it with me. Remember, it's row, row, row your boat. Here we go. X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root. B squared minus 4 AC divided by 2A. Learn this, and we have to forget. Thank you for having me today. Like so that's the first way of that song. <laughs> Kenzie, you might just ask, she had my class last year. Specific problems or requests, email them to request at Mahalo. What's up, EJ? I have a question. So, yep. So why do we have to memorize this if, like, when we're older in, like, our everyday lives, we just have, like, our phones to just put it on and, like, look at it? Um, it'll take, like, two seconds. Because I'm telling you you have to memorize it, that's why. But, like, it's not logical. <laughs> Is everything in life logical? No, but, like... It's no, too, okay. It's too there too you go, you answer your own question. So, Kenzie said she likes the other way better. She remembered it from last year. Um, this is the way, honestly, most of my kids, my students, I should say I don't have kids. Um, I do not have kids. This is the way my students remembered it last year. Why is this not working? Um, here we go. Can you talk about Jimmy, too? Okay. Hey, what's up? All right, so um, this video is about a really awesome... Hey, what's up? All right, so um, this video is about a really awesome way to remember the quadratic formula that I uh, learned from my professor a couple years ago. And I've, I've never forgotten it, so I thought that I would share it with you. Ready for this? A negative boy couldn't decide whether he should go to a radical party. But, being square, he decided not to go. He missed out on four awesome chicks. The party was not over until 2 a.m. Boom. Quadratic formula. So we'll do one more, we'll do that one more time. All right, so, all right, so um, this video is about a really awesome way to remember the quadratic formula that I uh, learned from my professor a couple years ago. And I've, I've never forgotten it, so I thought that I would share it with you. Ready for this? A negative boy couldn't decide whether he should go to a radical party. But, being square, he decided not to go. He missed out on four awesome chicks. 
party was not over until 2 a.m. Boom. Okay, formula. Yes, Ange. In this story, he uses negatives, but isn't it technically the opposite? It is technically opposite. You will hear me say, hey, you will hear me say negative every single time, just because that's how I'm conditioned. That's how I was taught. I've done it a million times. I've said negative b every time. I mean, if you do a negative negative number, it gets you a positive, right? So either way it works. If you want to use opposite, you can. If you use negative, you can. It's perfectly fine. Now, do you have to use either of the ways I just showed you? No. Absolutely not. If you just want to remember negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, go ahead and remember it. Right? That's up to you. How you remember it is up to you. But you do need to know it, and the more you use it, the easier it will be, I promise. Okay? So, we're going to go through the proof really quick. You start with AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Right? That's our standard form. We start solving, we divide by A on both sides. Right? Then we square everything. We go on and on and on to the proof. We're not going to go through the proof. We don't care about the proof. The proof is super long and tedious, and you will never use it in your life. You probably never use quadratic formula, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, but we're not going through the proof. You don't need to know where it comes from. You do need to understand it does come from actually solving for x out of standard form, and that's why we can use it when we're in standard form. All right? So our quadratic formula comes from standard form. That's why we use it then. So if we're going to solve 4x squared minus 7x plus 11 equals 0, we ask you to solve that. Right? It may be factorable, but I don't want to try and factor that. Right? So instead, I'm going to use a quadratic formula. What is my a value in this equation? 4. What is my b value? Negative 7. What is my c value? 11. Now, all you need to do to use quadratic formula is plug it in. x equals negative b, so negative, negative 7 would be positive 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared. How do we know if it's plus or minus? You're gonna, hey, that's a great question. So plus or minus, that means you're going to get two answers every time. So at the end, we'll see we're going to actually do 7 plus whatever the square root is over 2a, and then we're going to do 7 minus that square root over 2a. So you can use them both, so you should get two answers. Okay? So negative 7 squared minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times 4 times 11, <coughs> over 2 times 4. And from there, it's just doing calculations. Now, I like to go step by step, and that's why I'm going to do it on the board. I've had some people who figured out they can put the whole thing in their calculator at once, and it spits out the answers for them. Would I suggest that? Absolutely not. There's so many room for so much room for error in that that it just you can eat, make a simple mistake and screws everything up. Now, if you can do it, go ahead. Great. But I like to take it step by step. So I like to do what's underneath the radical first. I get seven plus or minus the square root of negative seven squared is forty nine minus hey four times four is eight times eleven is eighty eight. Four, wow, you are right. Yikes. Woo! Oops. Four times four is 16, not eight. Thank you for pointing that out. So we should get what, 176? So minus 176 all over eight. Well, so we get x equals seven plus or minus the square root of, what's 49 minus 176? What was that? <laughs> Negative 127. Negative 127 over 8. Well, hold on a second. How do you take the square root of a negative number? Oh. Oh, we have the old I, right? And we need to do our simplified radical form for this as well. So please try it out. I don't want to do anything. Right? Hey, is there any perfect square that goes into 127, guys? Trying to figure that out. Hold on. Okay, do it. <laughs> yes? Mm, I'll make it TikTok with you if you get 100 on the test. Wow. If you get A on the test. Hold on. Okay. Um, is there any perfect square that goes into 127? No. <laughs> There's not, right? So it's just going to be 127 and I squared, which means I get x equals 7 
plus or minus square root of i squared is just i, right? Yeah. Square root of 127 over 8. And I can't simplify it anymore. That's my final answer. That's the whole answer right there. Right? We don't want decimals. We won't be able to add 7 plus i something anyway. So that's our final answer. Simplify it as much as you can. And that's it. Now, sometimes it'll come out to two nice numbers. Sometimes it'll come out to something with an i in it. Sometimes it'll come out to stuff with simplified radicals. That's fine. Simplify it as much as you can. Yes, Ange? So the students who have done it all in their calculator, have they found the plus negative sign? Okay, well, they would do like 7 plus, and they put everything in, and then they do 7 minus and put everything in. So they would do it twice. Okay? But I was looking at two inches. Question or name? But for like for this one, yep. how would they put in the calculator? Um, the your calculators calculator? actually have an I button. So it would come out and it would show you an I. It's down here at the book. Yep. No. We didn't show you that to the complex the numbers unit because then you wouldn't have actually done the stuff we wanted you to do. I didn't see I did that. Some of you found it during the complex numbers yeah, unit, but we didn't say that. Okay, let's try another one. So the really important thing, guys, is we need to be in standard form, right? In standard form, things need to equal zero before you can use anything. So like here, 9x squared plus 2x equals 30. I need to get it equal to zero. I need C on the other side. 9x squared plus 2x minus 30 equals zero. Now I can use my quadratic formula. So I get x equals negative b or negative 2 plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 a c all over 2a. Right? All I'm going to do is plug in my a, my b, and my c values into my formula. Are there any questions about that part? Okay, once again, I'm going to take it step by step. Square, 2 squared is 4. Minus, what's 4 times 9 times negative 30? 1,080. 1,080. So, is it positive or negative? Negative. 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 So, negative, negative makes it a positive 1,080. Wait, no, but it's negative 4 times 9. Okay, so if you use negative 4, then you would get a positive. But if you just do 4 times 9 times negative 30, then you get a negative and minus a negative gets you positive. Oh, so Either way, you get to the same spot. Okay. Yep. Over 18. Okay. Well, 4 plus 1,080 is 1,084 over 18. And you need to figure out, is there a perfect square that goes into 1,084? Well, you guys let me know. Is there one? 1,084. Is there any perfect square that goes into it? Four is actually the biggest one in the world. Okay. So, we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 271 over 18. Right? So, square root of 4 is 2. Negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 271 over 18. Is that as simplified as it gets? I know I'm going kind of quick, guys. Make sure you tell me to stop if I'm going too fast, please. Okay? So, all those calculations right now. What's up, Sarah? Can I do negative 2 plus 2? No. No, I can't yet. And here's why. Remember, this is 2 times that square root of 271. I can't do addition or subtraction before I were to multiply. So I can't do that addition or subtraction yet. What I can do though is I can take a 2 out of all three of these pieces, can I? I can factor a 2 out of them. If I take a 2 out of here, I'm left with 9. But that means I can take a 2 out of both parts on top. Negative 1, positive 1. You can think of it as splitting it up. Think of it like it's negative 2 over 18 plus or minus 2 root 271 over 18. So we can split up a fraction, right? 
So think of it like you're splitting it up if you need to. And then I can reduce this by taking a two out. I can reduce this by taking a two out. I'm doing the same thing I would do here. I'm just doing it as one fraction. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Why two? Because, well, what can you take out a negative two and 18? And okay. what can you take out a two and 18, right? Okay. We're just taking the biggest number we can out of all. Okay. So my answer here would be negative one plus or minus one root two, 271. Which, do you need that one there? No, but you can put it over nine. And that's my answer. So like I said, it's not always going to come out to nice numbers. What time got out of here today? 29. Oh, 29. All right. Oh, plenty of time. Okay. Any questions on the first two? Yes, Angie. Why don't you need to show the two? What's that? The two. Because when we, like, when we simplify any fraction, right? If I simplify that, the two just go away. When I factor out, that's when I can't just cancel them out. I'm just, I'm not actually canceling them. Okay? All right, let's do the last one quickly. This one should come out to nice numbers, I believe. Okay? So our last one here, x squared equals negative 6x minus 8. Now, once again, I'm a huge proponent of keeping a positive x squared. Do you have to? No, but I like to. It's just It's how my brain works. You guys can work differently, that's perfectly okay. But I'm going to add 6x and I'm going to add 8 to both sides. x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Now, if you get this problem on a test, what are you doing with it? You're telling you to solve? What are you going to do? Are you going to use quadratic formula or something like that? No, you're probably going to factor it, right? Factor and solve. That's perfectly okay, but for right now, we're going to use quadratic formula. Just because I want to practice it, okay? If you get this problem on a test, please don't use quadratic formula. You guys all know how to factor that. Please factor it, and it makes it so much easier for you. Okay? So, quadratic formula. X equals negative B, which is 6, plus or minus square root B squared minus 4 A C. Right? My A value is 1. There's nothing in front of X squared. Over 2A which is 2 times 1. Does everyone see where those numbers are coming from? Okay, then let's keep solving it. We get x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 32 all over 2. Well, what's 36 minus 32? 4, so it's negative 6 plus or minus square root of 4 over 2. Well, what's the square root of 4? 2. 2, good. So we're at negative 6 plus or minus 2 over 2. Now, here's where we split. We're going to split this into two parts because now we can keep simplifying. Right? I don't have a radical I'm dealing with anymore. I did it. I square rooted the 4. So I'm going to break this into negative 6 plus 2 over 2, and negative 6 minus 2 over 2. I'm breaking up that plus minus because I can keep going when I simplify. I don't have an imaginary number. I don't have a radical left. I have an actual number there. So negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Divided by 2 gives me negative 2. So x equals negative 2. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Divided by 2 gives me negative 4. So yeah, sometimes it will come out to nice numbers. That's great. It's awesome when that happens. Right? But sometimes it'll come out to ugly numbers. We've got to understand that. Okay? Any questions? Yes, no? Okay, I'll take those as a no. Am I going too fast? Okay, then let's talk about the discriminant quick. Um, we might not do all the problems. So, this part under the radical is referred to as the discriminant. The discriminant can tell us what type of solutions we can have. Yesterday, no, Friday we talked about, you can have two real, one real, or two complex, right? We said you do that in your calculator. However, the discriminant can tell us the same thing. Why do you think that is? Well, hey, if I take a square root of a positive number, 
I get a positive number, right? I get two real solutions then. If I take the square root of zero, I get zero, which means if I add zero or subtract zero, am I changing anything? No, so I would get one real solution. But if I have a negative under the radical, what type of solution am I going to get? What happens when I take a square root of a negative number? We get something imaginary. So that gets us too complex. So the discriminant tells us what type of solutions we might get. If our discriminant's positive, like I said, it comes out to a number, which gives me two real solutions. If my discriminant's negative, I try to take the square root of it, and it becomes imaginary, so I get too complex. And if it's zero, I get one real solution, because zero doesn't change anything if I add or subtract it. So what we can do is we can take a, b, and c, and we can take b squared minus 4ac and tell what type of solutions we're going to have. Now, on a test, can you still use your calculator and see how many times it hits the x-axis? Yeah, that's fine. Or you can now use a discriminant. So let's practice that. We'll do, well, we can do three real quick, right? Uh, no, we can do two of them, maybe one. So, the first one. 4y squared minus 12y plus 9. We need to take the discriminant, that part under the radical, b squared, minus 4ac. We need to figure out, does it come out positive, negative, or zero? Well, negative 12 is my b, so negative 12 squared minus 4 times a times c. I'm just plugging a, b, and c into that discriminant. Negative 12 squared is 144. Minus, what is 4 times 4 times 9? Negative 144. It's 144? Yeah. So 144 minus 144 is? Zero. Zero, which means I would have one real solution. Real. Okay, let's try one more. Let's go to the last one. No, we have plenty of room. B squared minus 4AC is my discriminant. So 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times 12. So you get 36 minus 144. Well, that equals what? Negative 108. So I get a negative number. Well, the square root of a negative number would give me an imaginary number, right? So that means I'm going to get two complex solutions. So just by looking at that piece under the radical, I can tell what type of solutions I'm going to get. All right? Does that make sense? Light clicking, hopefully. Yes? Okay. Swipe up, subscribe.